Hey guys, even here, and we have another update of Big Ramy. This time it was posted by Dennis James, who is, by the way, his uh, trainer, as far as I know. He trains him in person when he comes to US, and I think he practices posing with him, but his coach, his online coach, basically, is uh, Chad Nichols. Anyways, this is Big Ramy right here, and uh, I know we all saw those two photos, but this one is even more impressive. I mean, look at the size of his head <laughs> compared to the rest of his body. Like, uh, his pecs are twice the size of his head. His shoulders are bigger than his head. Now, I don't know if he's... I mean, he pulled the head a little bit backwards, so he, his body is kind of out-angling his head, but not that much. Big Ram is actually that big. And this time around, in this time of the year, surprisingly, he's very, very lean. I don't even know why is he this lean right now. Is his metabolism just that fast that he doesn't even have to try so hard to stay this lean? Unless he's force-feeding and uh, cheating every day, he just stays this lean? I don't know, Big Ramy doesn't really seem like a conditioning guy. He is a mass guy for sure. And even though he is very, very lean, he is extremely big right now. And here's the thing, guys, he is the Mr. Olympia champion, and a lot of people had their doubts, you know, should he be the Mr. Olympia champion? Some people would prefer Brandon to be the Mr. Olympia because he's probably more conditioned, uh, he has more balance, maybe he has a nicer physique, maybe he speaks better English. Some people, many, would think that Hardy deserved to win the Mr. Olympia, that he is the Mr. Olympia champion, because he definitely has better conditioning, uh, more quality to his muscle. But I'm looking at Big Grammy right here, and I'm thinking, wow, what a freaking monster. And, uh, you know, bodybuilding, it was always about the size. And now we have the guy who is arguably the biggest bodybuilder of all time. I mean, this guy gets to like 350, 360 in the offseason, and he's around 300 pounds on stage. And now Ronnie Coleman was 290 with much better conditioning. So say that Ronnie was the biggest Mr. Olympia ever, but Ram is there, you know, he's probably the second biggest. And right now, I mean, we don't have really super high quality competitors like we used to have when when Ronnie was winning or Dorian or Jay or Phil. I mean, now it's not really like that. But, you know, Big Remy is the biggest guy. He's definitely the freakiest, the most impressive in a way. And so it kind of makes sense, the representation of bodybuilding to be the freakiest, the biggest guy. And, you know, he, he worked on conditioning, he improved it, he worked on balance and stuff like that. So I think he did enough to be the Mr. Olympia winner and to be the champion, the representation of bodybuilding. Uh, he said that he's going to be more active on social media. And he already posted a training video, I just hope he's going to be consistent with this. The strength of this guy, these are 155s and he is lifting this with such ease. This feels like a little light workout. Hammer strength, chest press, incline, he's uh, pressing 5 plates per side and it looks like he's just squeezing the muscle, getting a pump, you know, he doesn't really seem like he's struggling with his weights. There are also videos of him incline pressing 200 pound dumbbells, so this guy is really strong. Uh, here his delts look like they are synthal, one would think that they are, but you guys know that they aren't really. He's just freaky like that, and I just hope that he is going to fulfill his promise, that he will be more active on social media, that he'll keep posting videos and photos and whatnot, uh, because he needs to, he should, he is the Mr. Olympia. Alright, next we have Chris Bumstead with a physique update, I don't know about that, I mean a lot of people sent me this photo thinking that this uh, is or might be recent, I've seen Instagram pages making comparison photos, this photo versus his uh, stage photos, but guys, I mean, look, couple of things, first, Chris Bumstead doesn't shave legs in the offseason, I know it might be weird that I noticed this, but I'm kind of dwelling on this, should I shave my legs in the offseason, I don't shave them either, and apparently he doesn't, you can see his offseason photos, he's always very hairy, so he doesn't do that, and here his legs are obviously shaved, uh, next thing is he has a full beard now, and here he has mustache, so unless he shaved his legs and he shaved his beard and now he has mustache and also if he has like this crazy conditioning right now in the offseason, we've seen a couple of photos and you know he looks pretty lean but this lean, I don't think so, I mean his quads are the last body part 
that comes in when he is dieting. You know, like last week, you can see these kind of cuts. Not five weeks out, not three weeks out, let alone in the middle of the off season. I know he's very lean, but I don't think this is this is him right now. I don't think he's this lean. I'm pretty sure this is just uh, another photo from his prep files. He didn't specify because he wants us to think whether this is recent or not. I mean, I would be really surprised if he has stage conditioning right now in the middle of the off season. So no, I don't think this is recent. Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comments. Well, I guess John De La Rosa comeback is not happening. This is him right now, apparently in the hospital. It looks like he, he tore something, most likely his bicep. Now, a couple of days before, he posted this update, in which, by the way, he looked pretty good, like, uh, conditioned, you know. I don't think he announced which show he's doing. Maybe he did, maybe I missed it, but usually he does the New York Pro. I think he is from the New York. Uh, maybe he would do the Indie Pro, because it's one week before the New York Pro, I believe. Anyways, here he looked pretty good, but he, he wrote in the caption that this, this was taken a couple, actually a day before the micro tear in his bicep. He said that he was resting and recovering and that he's going to be back on stage this season and it's going to be his best yet. But apparently something went wrong in the meantime. Maybe that micro tear wasn't that micro. Maybe it actually was a micro tear. You know, those happen. It happens to everybody. It happened to me a couple of times. You get a little bit of bruising and in a week you're good to go. But if it is something more serious, then you get some serious bruising. And I'm guessing he's in a lot of pain right now. As you can see, he is in a hospital. He's going to have a surgery. And you don't really have a surgery if you have a micro tear. If it is a more serious tear, then yeah. So, he's actually not going to be competing this season. Yeah, I was looking forward to a John De La Rosa comeback, but nope, not this, not this season. Maybe, I think he said he's going to do it later in the year, if he recovers in like September, October. I don't know which shows are going to happen uh, then. There are shows for sure. So, if it's not that bad, his recovery is going to be fast. And it doesn't really look like it's that bad. I mean, he didn't really say he completely tore the bicep or anything like that. So it seems like he's going to have a little surgery, recover for maybe a couple of months, and then slowly get back into the groove. And I think we will see John De La Rosa back on the stage this year. Even if John did endure the New York Pro, would he be able to beat this guy, Justin Rodriguez? This is him right now, about three weeks before the Indy Pro. And then also he's going to do the New York Pro as well. He looks absolutely phenomenal. I mean, he looked so much improved this year. At the Arnold Classic, you could have seen that he made the improvements, but he didn't peak properly. He, he was watery, I think he overcarbed. But then at the Boston Pro, a week later, he looked much better, where he took second uh, just after amazing, amazing William Bonek. So, William Bonnock, like, he's the guy that can win the Mr. Olympia. He's that highest freaking caliber of a bodybuilder. He's the top tier guy. And Justin, I'm not saying he was close to beating William, but, you know, he was the runner-up. So, uh, even though I think back in the day when John De La Rosa was competing against Justin, uh, he was beating him, but now I think Justin overcame John De La Rosa. I think Justin progressed to that point that it's going to be really hard for pretty much anybody to beat him. And uh, it looks like he's going to be even better at the Indie Pro and the New York Pro. And, uh, you know, he is, he is the favorite to win both of those shows. Um, I don't think he's going to have a real competition. I mean, who is going to challenge him? Blessing a volleyball? Come on. No. I'm assuming it's going to be a battle uh, against Charles Griffin, who seems to have improved his uh, weaknesses, which were his legs and mainly his waistline. It looks like he trimmed down the waistline and he learned how to do a vacuum. So a new and improved version of Charles Griffin with a small waist is definitely going to be an interesting addition. Uh, do I think he can beat uh, Justin? No, no. But it's going to be a battle. I think that's going to that's more realistic to be a battle than Blessing versus Justin. Maybe it's going to be the top three battle. I don't know. But you know, Charles Griffin looks pretty good right now. And lastly, we have a little bit of something from Flex Lewis. I know you guys would love to see a proper physique update. Trust me, I would as well. But no, unfortunately, we don't get to see that. We get to see his, uh, he, a photo of him doing leg press. 
it's not much, you can't really see much for physique. You can see that he holds on to all decent size, we saw a couple of uh, little teasers, uh, you know, he looks good, but here is an interesting part, it's the caption. So the part where he says he's more focused than ever in and out of the gym. So it looks like, and I'm hoping it is true, that Flex takes this seriously, this prep. And if he really does that, if he really tries hard, if he is super devoted to his training, to his diet, to his recovery, and everything that it takes, he knows what it takes, of course, then it's going to be, you know, a dangerous package that Mr. Olympia Open Division this year. I believe he's going to be there. I mean, he said a couple of times that he will, and then he didn't show up, and if he does that once again, he's going to lose a bunch of credibility, a bunch of fans, so I don't think he's going to do that. I think we will see him on stage, and uh, it looks like he's serious. It looks like he takes this very seriously, and that's just very promising. I'm really excited to see Flex Lewis at his absolute best at a 2022 Mr. Olympia. So guys, whatever you think we will see at that Mr. Olympia, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.